everybody, it's me, Estella, and I'm back with another SAT tips video. A long, long time ago, I did a how to get a 700 plus on the SAT reading sections, so I figured it's been enough time and I should probably do, I almost said how to get a 5, how to get a 700 plus on the SAT math section. I'm not gonna lie, the SAT math section was not my favorite, but I still managed to get above a 700 on it. So honestly, if I can do it, you can do it. And hopefully these tips will be helpful for you and you will get that 700 plus. All right, so the SAT math section it is overall pretty complicated, but, but once you've done enough practice, you get the gist of it. And you can see there's a lot of repetition from each practice test to each test and just the concepts that are tested are pretty much the same. So my tip number one is not to freak out that the SAT math section is too overwhelming. Honestly, there are so many resources out on the internet Khan Academy and they will help you learn the concepts that maybe you didn't learn in school or that you need to brush up on or you forgot. So there are lots of resources on the internet for the SAT math section. So if you feel behind or that you don't know the concepts, don't freak out. You can always self-teach them yourself because there's so many, luckily enough in this day and age, there's so many amazing resources on the internet. So now that we went over tip number one, my tip number two is to become familiar with the SAT math section if you haven't already. So the SAT math section isn't really an SAT math section. There's actually two sections. You have the no calculator section, which is where you have 15 multiple choice questions and five grid in questions and you have 25 minutes for that section and then you have the calculator section where you have 30 multiple choice questions, eight grid ins, and you have 55 minutes to do all of that. So in total, there are 58 questions and you have 80 minutes to do them. You also have reference information, you have some triangles, you have some formulas there. So if you're panicking that you need to memorize those, you don't, they're right there on the SAT math section formulas. So just check them out. If you ever come across this question that requires you to use a formula. Obviously, it's better to have them memorized, but honestly, you can totally do just fine without memorizing anything if you're a fast enough flipper of pages. All right, so now let's talk about the SAT math topics because there are three main... I can't with my fingers today. There are three major sections that you need to know. The Heart of Algebra, Passport to Advanced Math, and problem solving and data analysis. Well, I said there are three. There's technically a fourth one also called additional topics, which is pretty much just geometry and complex numbers and trigonometry. So there's only four, but those three that I just listed in the beginning are the main ones that you need to be concerned with. They cover the vast majority of the test. So the heart of algebra, if you couldn't guess, covers algebra. It covers a lot of the things that maybe you covered earlier in high school or even in middle school, depending on how your advanced you are, or you may be covering right now, but it's pretty much just like linear equations, expressions, variable, solving linear equations, graphing linear equations, graphing linear inequalities, solving systems of linear equations, all that kind of wonderful stuff. And you're gonna need to know all of that for the SAT. Here are just a couple of sample questions from the SAT math sections that would qualify as being under the heart of algebra. And as you can see, they pretty much just ask you to either solve a system of equations or find a variable and what the value of that variable is, that kind of stuff, or graphing equations. Now on to the next section. The next section is called the Passport to Advanced Math, and it's a bit more advanced. And this section is definitely a bit more complicated as it covers quadratic equations, nonlinear expressions, radicals, rational exponents, nonlinear equation graphs, polynomial factors and graphs. And as you can see here, these are a couple of sample questions. They are a bit more complicated, so if if you haven't done any of those topics in a while, you definitely want to brush up on those and the formulas and just how quadratic equation works, the rationals, exponential, etc. Moving on to problem solving and data analysis, that is already kind of more of the statistics section of the math sections, and that's pretty much where they will be testing you on different basic forms of statistics like range, median, mode, ratios, proportions, rates, and also reading graphs. Last but not least is the additional topics in math. That's pretty much just geometry, circle theorems, circle equations, 
complex numbers, right triangle geometry, etc. And as you can see here, this is already more where you are dealing with trigonometry and geometry and shapes and all that stuff that you might not have covered in a while. So again, you definitely want to review some of the theorems and things like that if you're kind of iffy on those. So now that you know the general breakdown of the SAT math section, I will also link a ton of resources in my description box for you guys so you can check out a more in-depth breakdown from different resources of the SAT math section and some resources and all that kind of stuff so hopefully you guys find them helpful but once you really get a grasp and understanding of what is being tested and asked on the SAT math sections now you can move on to my next step which is to do one or two I recommend two diagnostic practice tests preferably the first two of the official ones so that you can solidly assess what you're scoring and compare that to what your goal score is once you've done that and you've done the two diagnostic tests, go over all of your mistakes and evaluate what your weakest areas are. Once you've evaluated and figured out what your weakest areas are, and most likely they will be content areas, then make sure you start learning everything you can about that by using internet resources and just researching or maybe a textbook and pretty much just brushing up on those concepts so that you no longer make those mistakes on the SAT just because you didn't really know what to do in those scenarios. So yeah, this leads me to my next tip is before you start doing drills and practice questions is to first go over the content. That honestly just personally really helped me a lot, just going over the math concepts and reviewing them and it really just helps so that you don't waste time drilling stuff and then you don't really know why you're missing them, like what's going on. So definitely cover the content first if you have serious content issues or just don't remember some things. My tip number five, I think this is tip number five, is to memorize all the formulas. Now, I don't mean the formulas that are on the reference sheet in the actual test, but all the formulas that you need to know. And there are quite a few formulas that you do need to be familiar with on the SAT. As you can see here, I'm showing you guys right now this really useful SAT math formula sheet that I personally use. So hopefully this will be helpful to you guys as well if you want an SAT math sheet that pretty much summarizes all the formulas that you need to know. But yeah, print it out, maybe have it on your phone, and just constantly review those formulas and make sure you memorize them, but not only memorize them, also know how to implement them in which scenarios and just how to basically do that because you obviously just with the formulas you're not going to really know how to use them unless you've done practice problems or reviewed the content. Once you've reviewed the content and kind of become more comfortable with that is to really drill the areas that you're still really struggling with because while you can know all the content you want and be 100% comfortable with everything, you still might be making certain mistakes because certain types of questions keep tricking you or maybe you're just not implementing the knowledge you have in the right way. Definitely do drills on, on certain SAT content areas or types of problems and useful resources again will be down below but some that I recommend are like UWorld, Khan Academy, Crack SAT, and old PSAT practice tests. When you miss a question, always write it down in your notebook, write why you missed it, what the correct answer was, and then how to not make that mistake in the future, and it does really help improve your scores. My next tip is to do full practice test time. So once you've done the drills, you got the content down, do some full practice test time, if not all of them, try to get all of the SAT practice tests done if you can. Um, but definitely try to do them timed so that you get really comfortable with the timing of everything and also realize that it's not just the SAT math that you have to do, also have to do the SAT reading and the SAT writing. There's a lot of stamina in, in the whole SAT and you really got to get used to it. So definitely do full practice tests leading up to the actual SAT. Go over all of your mistakes, check them, write down why you missed them, all that kind of stuff. And my last tip is to skip on the actual test, skip questions you don't know how to do. There's honestly going to be easier math questions later in the test. I know that usually the vast majority of the time it gets harder, but sometimes you will find a few easier easier ones here and there, like the beginning of the grid in section, for instance, 
or sometimes they'll have like a graph or something and then the first question will be easy and the other ones will be hard but honestly the point of the SAT is to maximize how many points you get so there's not really any point of spending time on the ones that you really have no idea how to do or making you freak out so even if you look at a question and you're already panicking and you don't understand what's going on skip it move on go to the next question and just kind of save that for the end and then if you have time review it again maybe now that you've gone through other questions your brain will work again and actually be able to read the question and figure out that it wasn't as terrible as you thought and if not just try your best guess and bubble something in definitely make sure you bubble in everything though and make sure you bubble it in correctly but definitely skip all the questions that you find really confusing or complicated and just move on to the next ones until you reach one that you know how to do and just first do all of the questions that you feel really confident about. All right, that is it for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this SAT math section tips video, how to get a 700 plus was helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or if you want me to do a specific video, leave your requests down below and I will be happy to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys!